Hi there, and welcome to the Collaboration Global podcast, Being Human, Hidden Depths. My name is Jill Tiny, and I'd like to welcome you uh, to meet one of my favourite, favourite people of our community, Kay Westrap. Kay, welcome to our podcast. Lovely to have you here. Thank you. It's a pleasure to be here. <laughs> not interrupted anything. You've not been, been too busy lately. Uh. <laughs> No, my, my diary is surprisingly clear. <laughs> <laughs> For people that are watching this in like 2020 or listening to this in 2023, you'll have forgotten that in 2020 we had Corona. Um, but was it life um, uh, in the time of cholera? It's now in the time of Corona, isn't it? Yeah. Um, so first and foremost, let's just refresh people's memory. You've been around for a little while now in the nicest possible sense. And you are a pivotal member of my dream team. Um, so how did you find out about Collaboration Global, uh, B Collaboration as it was then, um, and what makes you feel like it's a cool place for you to be? Um, I was a networking event and um, I sat next to a guy um, and it was really, really busy um, a little bit chaotic type networking event where you really only got about 10 minutes to talk to people. It was so many people in the room and then you sat at a round table and so, and they were so big, you couldn't talk across the table. Um, so really all you could do was talk to the person either side of you. Mm. And it just so happened that the guy that was sat next to me, um, we, we were chatting and he was talking about, you know, what do you do? And, you know, what, what, what lights you up kind of thing. Mm. And um, he said, oh, you know, going on what you've said, you would love um, this thing called B Collaboration. And I was like, okay. Um, and the way I am is that I believe things happen for a reason. Mm. And you meet people for a reason. And there's always, that's always a fork in the road. And you can carry on, on, you know, one path or you can take the other path and just go off and be inquisitive and, and find out what's down that path instead of the current one. Mm. And so I thought, okay. And he mentioned another thing and, and I actually looked at both of them. Mm. Um, and um, the other one wasn't for me and that was fine. Um, um, but big collaboration, I, I came along and I was mind blown. Um, it was just, I, I was like, this is what I've been waiting for my whole life. Oh, you know, wow. I kind of felt like I was, um, out there singing a song in the, in, in the silence, you know, and, um, and just, and not having the choir to, to perform with, you know, right. Yeah. Um, and all of a sudden I felt like I'd found the choir and, and all the notes were in harmony and, you know, and the orchestra was there and, and it just felt yeah. like I'd come home. And I think I remember saying that, that mm. it felt like I'd come home. And I've heard a lot of people say that as well. Um, and I think the closest I've got to that in the past was um, when I was a Samaritan. I was a Samaritan for about 10 years. And I felt very much like that with the people there because mm. they were kind of motivated in the same way. Um, and um, all complete Fruit Loops. We all, we all were just, you know, not that what helps. you'd expect. Yeah, <laughs> not what you'd have expected of, of Samaritans. All absolutely really yeah. fun, fun people. You have you know, to be, yeah. But, but kindred spirits, you know, they all kind of, as I say, were motivated from the same space. Mm. Um, and then places where I've worked, you know, I've connected one-on-one -on -one with people in that same way, but not an organisation, you know. Right. Um, as I say, the closest as an organisation I've ever come to it was Samaritans. Um, not that big collaboration is anything like it. It's just like it's no. heart-centred. Do you know yeah. what I mean? Um, yeah. And so... Um, and then obviously uh, it, it's sort of morphing into Collaboration Global, which is even more so. Um, uh, and, uh, you know, there, there was things that needed to change and within Collaboration Global they have. Yeah. And therefore it's much more, we're back to being much more harmonious and, and all singing the same wonderful song. And, you know, it's lovely. Yeah. And I think talking about coronavirus as well, more and more people are realising that, 
the lives we were leading, um, you didn't need all the stuff. When you're living at home and you've got no one, um, you know, you're not going out for dinner, you're not going out to the theatre, you're not doing all the doing, you're just being with your family, being with people around you, being with the ones that you love and missing the ones that you love. All of a sudden, everyone is realising that the heart-led stuff is much more important the, yeah. than the sort of the logical and the, I need this amount of income, I need to go on this holiday, I need to... Um, post wonderful photos on my Instagram account you know none of that matters when when you kind of get down to the basis of what you have um, and we're here a bit later on about part of your journey this year um, that has been quite incredible uh, but from looking back on our memories of when you first joined I do remember uh, in some of the meetings that we used to have um, I know it was at a time when you just lost uh, two of your dogs at a relatively close space of time um, but you were the one that kind of uh, somebody would say something at the front of the room and you could see it went straight to your heart and you were emotionally affected by the things that were being said in the room and it was like she really gets it she really understands now I know you were probably um, over the sort of weeks you were emotional anyway because you were sad and grieving but at the same time um, good news was making you happy as well as sad news you know it wasn't just something that was going to go oh I miss my dog so I feel sad it, it was you just got what was going on in the room and I mean, your husband for example <laughs> I don't think I can speak to your husband without crying oh dear. Out, of, out, of, out of no he's just he 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 kind of triggers something in me that makes me glad it, and like I remember seeing the picture of him and your daughter on her wedding day oh, yeah. and I cried buckets I was like <laughs> so did I. it just was the most touching and knowing the sort of person he is I don't really know her but I know him and I thought oh my god that's such a touching picture but that's the point is there's people in in collaboration global that are different or or they are more of themselves yeah. than, than most people are out there you know they're more brave and they're willing to, you know, I mean, I'm, I am a very emotional person anyway, mm. but I'm emotional in lots of ways, not just crying all the time, no. um, which I seem to do around, as I say, around Alan. Um, <laughs> he, as I say, he said, look at me and I, I'm like, oh, Alan, that's so touching, you know. Um, but, yeah. um, but also, you know, we have such fun and such joy and such, you know, we share so many wonderful hysterical moments yeah and it's about you know nobody is afraid to be their whole self yeah you know absolutely yeah yeah there isn't any I mean one of the things talking about the sort of meeting you went to before when you met these people that spoke about um, B collaboration is you go to some of those meetings and it's very much about putting the face on and how are you and how's business I'm fine fine Oh, business is great when you're barely scraping by. <laughs> yeah, yeah, exactly. And it's like, you're allowed to say you've had a shit week, you know, yeah. it's okay. Exactly. What? And, and if, if you were able to say that in an environment where there are lots of other specialists who can go, oh, that's awful. How can I help? What can I do to make it better? I mean, you're... Which, which you know, you've done. You've said, I can help you with that. I've done with other people within, you know, somebody was yeah. sharing one of their struggles and a couple of us went, we're going to help you. Um, okay. And we did. And we offered sort of our expertise to try and help that person move along because they were in a blocked situation, you yeah. know, and that it, happens all the time. All the time. Absolutely. And, and I think if that had been somebody offering that in another environment, uh, a net, normal, normal networking environment, whatever that is, um, I would always be dubious that they're coming to say they're helping me, but are they going to sell to me at the end? What they're going, yeah, exactly. What's in it for them? Yeah, you know, what's what's their what's their sales pitch? You know, where where's the hook? You know, exactly. And yet, in in our environment, um, you, somebody will help you quite genuinely, openly help you. And my reaction, if somebody helps me, is like, okay, how can I repay them? And it, no, there's no ask in there at all. But my conscience would say, actually, I'll see if I can get them a referral. I'll see if I can connect yeah, them up with somebody. That's, that's natural human nature, and, exactly. and that's what we play to is bringing out the the goodness and the human in people. Yeah. And it's the it's the being not doing in you know the human first aspect of it and and therefore you know you want to help other people and and it happens continually you and know it's exactly the same that you know it's much more fun to give than it is to receive yes. 
Yes. Why, you know, and, and as you say, it's the natural space. So we've been brought up in this space uh, of fear, scarcity and competition. It's like, look after yourself and make, don't forget to do the sale at the end. And, um, you know, there's, there's not enough to go around. It's not enough business to go around. So if there's another business coach over there, he's my competition. I've got a, in, in our environment, it's love, connection, abundance. There's plenty of food, uh, food, plenty of food to go around, but plenty of Toilet business rolls. to go around. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. But that's the mentality that we've been brought up into, isn't it? Is there, there isn't enough. So when, when you come from a place of, well, obviously there is enough, you know, that we've got plenty of business to go around. There's billions of people on this planet. We can find someone that wants to buy what we're offering. Um, but also the core value being love. Uh, and if you come from a place of love, you just want to help someone. And then if you can help them and they can find you some business, or even they say, actually, that was amazing. Can I do some more work with you? How much do you charge? You've then got that natural environment if you talk to a good salesperson these days they don't talk to you about closing the sale um and kind of uh, honing it down you've got your sales funnel and you've got to do this and you've got to do 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 they talk about helping people and problem solving and that's how you create sale but it isn't about the close it's about how can i help you so i think the whole ethos and the whole environment of collaboration global is what can i do to help yeah. and i remember one guy saying to me a couple of years ago um I need to find out if you're for real because it, you know, it, you're, you're, you're too good to be true and it can't, you can't be right. Um, and he, he literally spent a day with me to find out if I was for real. And at the end of it, he went, yeah, you are. <laughs> and because he didn't believe that I wasn't in it for the money, I wasn't in it to see how much I could get out of him. I was just in it to see if I could help. So I enough, my husband was with me for six years trying to find out if I was for real before <laughs> he would, before he believed that I was for real and then, then asked me to marry him. Oh. But he spent six years waiting for the armour to, to, to the crack in the armour, you know. Oh my goodness. And he still hasn't found it because there isn't one. No, no, exactly. I am what I am. Yeah. Well, one of the things I remember about you in the early days uh, is you kind of sided up to us and went, yeah, the yeah, website's a bit shit. <laughs> we went, yeah, you're right. It is. And you went, do you want me to do something about it? And I'm like, okay, just please. And you were so flipping fast. You got bang, bang, bang. Give me the content. Give me the content. And we spent an afternoon or something together. Um, and it's like quickly write this and quickly write that. Da, da, da. And we had this, you know, amazing beast that just grew and grew and grew that was just incredible do you remember it just had like a red dot and a blue dot and you'd go to one and that oh. took you off somewhere not logical and and off to another website and uh, yeah. or another link and this one none of it joined up and you know, i was like what is this you yeah. know? And then <laughs> i sat there thinking you mustn't criticize and then i thought <laughs> oh yeah you, you, really ought, you really ought to get that sorted and you were like yeah i know we've been trying and, and i was like <laughs> could help yeah, and you could tell that that wasn't our genius that wasn't what we were no, good at no Definitely. but it, and it wasn't important but it was important do you know what i mean yeah in people were the important thing from your exactly. perspective yeah that 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 but then in my kind of world that represents when people people want to check you out and fake. so it, yeah. you know it's like you do need to have that in the background you know it's not the most important thing but it's an important yeah yeah exactly. so that was quite funny but I was like oh I really need to say something I spent weeks thinking oh I better not I better not and then I'm like I've got to <laughs> it was like burning you know? <laughs> yeah, yeah. Actually, let's get that yeah, out there exactly, and, yeah. and on that note in in you know to the public and I've said it many many times but you know for the record when we um uh, changed our brand and we went into collaboration global I've never known anyone get a website up and running so damn quick um, it was over the, the Christmas period as well. It was like, you know, you didn't ever say to me, actually, I'm a bit busy at the moment. Can we not do this? Every time I sent something over, you bang within about literally an, less than an hour, 30 minutes, sometimes almost instantaneously. I'm like, wow, when did I send that text or that email? So thank you from the bottom of my heart because I'm quite proud of our little website now. And I know there's always work to be done on it. So there's always yeah, going to be it's, things. It's, that, it's, painting the fourth road bridge isn't it yeah it's all you know but, but... Uh, we we wanted to do it um to be ready for sort of january the first and, yeah and uh and damn and well it, do. yeah we did yeah so thank you very much for that you're super Absolutely. star so, it, was a, it was it was a welcome challenge and a distraction at the time that's true that's true yes you did have one or two things on your plate um yeah. Shall we come to that in a minute? I just want to find, uh, let you share with um, everybody your kind of journey with um, 
who do we see in front of us now and how did they get there? So ironically, you and I um, were probably a few roads apart when we grew up as children and we didn't realise it. So yeah, I'll, you, I'll you and my, my cousin's best friend, um, weirdly, we found out through Alan because Alan went to the same school as I did. Yeah, and sick. then, and I said, Who did you, what school did you go to then, Jill? And, and you said, oh, Plashett. And I said, oh, my sister went there. Do you know my sister? You said, no, but I know your cousin. Or yeah. I know this, this other Gordon. And that was my cousin. And you were her best friend and had been at a wedding and, you know, yeah. and all this. And, and um, so, yeah, it, it was, uh, it's kind of those sliding door moments, wasn't it? Yeah. We were meant to get together eventually when the time yeah, was exactly. right. exactly exactly so my me who who am i um well um i i grew up in forest gate in east london um and i'm the youngest of four i've got a sister and two brothers um i had a, a difficult childhood to say the least um i had uh, my parents were uh, a challenge um, and, and I won't go into details, but it was uh, horrific at times and very uh, traumatising. I think um, to, to say it was an unhappy childhood was probably an understatement of yeah, epic proportion. It, mm. Yeah, it was. And I mean, you, you kind of know the story. I don't put it out publicly, but yeah, mm. it was a very, very difficult childhood. Um, and as such, I never, um, I never felt loved. Um, ever and I then uh kind of they they threw me out when I was 18 which actually was the best thing that ever happened to me mm. um because I then started to get my sanity back um even though it was really really tough um mm. and um very lonely and you know but it kind of and it also underpinned that not being loved thing you know um and um I then got married at 21 um to somebody that again was didn't love me was incapable of loving anybody actually even in himself wow. and um and he i was just a meal ticket basically um and he was he was uh, a strange character should we say but i stayed married for by the time we got divorced i uh, was 22 years we were actually together 18 and a half years wow. um obviously we waited a little while before getting divorced um and that was really tough because i felt terribly terribly guilty um because i felt i was ruining his life and um etc cetera, etc cetera. and actually when i told him he went we were upstairs in my study and he went downstairs and i heard laughing and 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 he was watching a, a comedy program and laughing his head off and i'm like i've cried for six months about worrying about how I'm going to affect you and, and actually you're not bothered at all, you know? No. Um, and so again, that it was, it was very challenging. Um, and me being me decided he went on the Thursday and I thought, right, I'm going out. So on the Saturday I decided I was going to go out. So I did. I went to a nightclub <laughs> and, uh, do you remember I, which one it was? It was called Jumping Jacks in Basildon. <laughs> I know a quality, it well. <laughs> quality establishment. This has since been knocked down. Um, Thank goodness. So, uh, yeah, it was that good. They, they didn't even put oh. a blue plaque up. To say they didn't Kate, name it twice, no. Here. No. <laughs> um, and so, uh, yeah, I went there yeah. um, and had a really good time. I didn't want or expect to meet anybody. I just wanted to go and I don't drink but um i wanted to just go out and dance and have a good time yeah. and that's what i did um and i thought this was great i'll do that again next saturday so the following saturday i did and met my current husband that was quick <laughs> just like that 10 just days like that. later wow. after after separating with my first husband 10 days later i meet my what was then to be my second husband and um we both were like adamant that we didn't want to get involved um he'd just come out of a relationship and was very hurt and i'd obviously just come out of a 18 year marriage and didn't want to you know yeah. get involved and the more we dis said we didn't want to get involved the more we were like magnets pulling together that's funny um 
And so, as I said earlier, we were together six years before he finally caved in and, and realised that he needed to marry me. <laughs> um, I'd already practised my signature. I already had my Gmail account. Um, I'd had that for years. It was just a question of the penny dropping when? for him. Yeah. But I would, the thing that was really, really important for me was that I needed for him to knew, know that he loved me. I needed to know that he loved me. Yeah. And I never wanted to push him into getting married. I'd have married him that first day I met him. Wow. Actually. Um, because I know, I know when something's right. And, you know, I know I make decisions very quickly. Mm. Um, and I've got a very strong intuition. Um, and, uh, but I waited and I waited and I waited. And I wanted him to want to marry me. And that was the most important thing for me. I didn't mm. want him to be pushed into a corner. No. And then he decided he did. And then that, 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 that's history. Um, and so then we got married the following year and, and uh, all was well. Lovely. So, yeah, we've been married. It was our anniversary on Easter Sunday, oh. um, 11 years. So, and it was the, I th I'm not sure it's the first one that's actually fallen on Easter Sunday, but I think it is mm. because Easter moves around. Yeah, you know, with most other anniversaries, every so many years, it will come back to that same day. Yeah, like oh, you know, you got married on a Saturday or a Sunday Eventually. or whatever. Eventually, it will come back, but because Easter moves around, yeah, it coinciding to be on a Sunday and Easter weekend, you know. Yeah. Um, and yet, yeah. So this this one was a bit different because we kind of uh, were indoors and not doing anything, but it was lovely. It was still lovely because we were yeah. together. So, yeah, yeah. You know. So um. One of the things that I think you should do at some point in your life is to write a book because um, I want um, Steven Spielberg or someone to turn it into a movie. And it's, one, it's one of those um, stories that if, pe if people read it in a book, they'd go, well, that's ridiculous. That could never happen to one person. It's just too much all in one go, you know, but we, you've got the happy ending at the moment. So that's why it's like, yes, let's, let's make this movie because I only go and see movies with happy endings. Um, so um, a little while ago, I don't know how many years ago it was now, that um, you fell foul of cancer, didn't you? Yeah, I had, uh, well, that was my, I call them my attention seeking episodes. Okay. Um, I've had three where Gosh. I've nearly died. Um, so the first one was I had uh, what's called statin myopathy, mm. where I had poisoning from statins and uh, I had liver, uh, kid kidney failure. Oof. and was rushed in paralyzed rushed into hospital um and um yes yeah, so that was number one wow. then got over that and then a few years later i got uh, breast cancer um and so that was kind of near miss number two mm. and uh got over that and then a year later um i was given because the cancer has i've got a lot of side effects from the cancer um you know not not um dreadful but life changing if you like mm -hmm. um and one of them is i get arthritis um in my knees and yeah. and in my hands and yeah. um and and in my feet my feet burn like anything um and um so that they gave me uh naproxen uh, which within two weeks had eaten through my stomach and I had a perforated ulcer. Oh. And so again, I was rushed in and was in, in the, the anesthetic room signing the form like this oh. and Lee's at the door because he couldn't get parked because they said to him, get here, we're operating with, you know, and mm. he's at the door saying, mm. bye then, bye then. And I'm like, oh. yeah, bye. You know? oh, um, it was like one of those proper, proper, you know, melodrama things. Mm. Uh, and so that was sort of number three. Um, and touch wood, since then, I've, I've, been, I've been well. Um, I'm not my old self. I never will be. Um, but, you know, life's good. I, I, you know, it's not, I'm alive, put it that way. Yeah. And things, I can work around the limitations. So, like, stairs are really difficult for me. Um, I don't have the stamina that I used to have. Um, and I get pain, horrific pain in my feet um, when I go to bed. So sleeping was a problem because of the burning and the pain in my feet. Well, I've mm. now, I've, I've cracked that one. Um, I've got some medication that I only take, uh, cocodamol, nothing, nothing dreadful. I take a couple of cocodamol at night and that's now got that under control. 
Um, mm. So I'm now sleeping really well. So, so that's good. But um, although you've got problems that you're carrying with you as a result of, of the illness, actually, you, you are a kind of a new improved version, Kay Westrap, because of the lessons that you've learned along the way. Now, I remember you telling me the story. I don't know if you want to share it about um, your sister coming to care for you. <laughs> so when I, I had, when, when I went for my, my test for my breast cancer, I, um, I had uh, the, the consultant said, oh, yeah, it'll be grade one, stage one, yeah, which is kind of minor, yeah. Um, and then when they actually operated, they found it was stage two because it had moved to my lymph nodes. Mm. And actually, when they examined it, it was grade four, which meant it was most aggressive. Um, and so although they'd caught it really early, or I'd caught it because I found the lump really early, um, it was dangerous. Um, and so therefore, I had to have a very heavy duty chemotherapy regime. And I, from literally day 21 of the first chemotherapy, I was out of it. And I spent eight months on my sofa, just laying there, you know, um, of which Lee, my husband, nursed me through and he was amazing. And so I was having chemotherapy every three weeks and we, I'd have it on the Thursday and I'd be on steroids from then till the Monday or the Sunday. And then the Monday when the steroids wore off, I we used to call it my dip day mm. because I would crash through the floor and mm. I would be so ill. It was unbelievable. Um, and so my sister took every third Monday off and my niece um, wasn't working on a Monday. She's a hairdresser. And so Mondays were her day off. So the two of them used to trot along every third Monday and just sit with me and paint my, they, they, they mistakenly told me, uh, you know, on one of these cancer websites that if you paint your nails black, they won't fall off. Oh, <laughs> probably it's not true at all. it's but, just it's a side effect of the of the the drugs that yeah all my toenails and fingernails all fell off um oh, but you've had your goth period uh, now so you can say you've so yeah i had that. so i'd lay there sort of you know completely out of it and my niece and my sister would uh, <coughs> my, my nails and my toenails and sit bring some crochet and we'd sit there and they'd laugh make me laugh and you know so yeah but so my sister sat there and she said um she said um actually she said uh, i'm glad you got cancer and i was like what mm -hmm. <laughs> uh, excuse me what, what'd you say to that and i said why and she said because now i can do things for you and you can't stop me you've never let me do anything for you ever you're so self-sufficient and now i can do stuff and you can't stop me Wow. And I'm like, mm. and that was such a wake up call because I am a giver. I am like one of life's, I love doing yeah. stuff for people. I am just always doing stuff for people. I love yeah. to treat people. I love to, you know, surprise them, do whatever. Yeah. But I never, I never expect anything back. And, uh, and because I have had this, you know, thrown out of home at 18 and you know I mean I was working in Saturday jobs from age 12 and buy my own school uniform and you know all that kind of, I've had to be self-sufficient yeah and so you know and not feeling loved I didn't feel I could rely on anybody I had to just do everything for yeah. myself and rely on just me you yeah. know and all of a sudden the penny drops that yes I could rely on people and also that allowing people to do things for you is actually a gift to them it's a gift to you as well mm. that they're mm. giving you but you're giving them a gift of allowing them to experience that joy of being able to help somebody and I was like and so yeah it, it was a wake-up call it really mm. was you know mm. so <clears throat> And now, of course, you're you're gifting it back to your husband, aren't you? It's what goes yes. around comes around. Yeah, um, so <laughs> we we uh, last November the first, he wow. got diagnosed with cancer as well, um, jaw cancer. Um, he's had a 
um, a problem with his gum for about a year and been, he hadn't been ignoring it at all. He'd been mm. bouts of force to the, the dentist and the dentist then sent him to the local hospital who did a biopsy that came back clear. They couldn't work it out. So they sent him to another hospital. They did five, four biopsies. Three out of the four came back cancerous. Oh. Um, so, you know, the original hospital probably took it from the place, you know, luck of the draw where there uh, was no cancer and it just so happened that they took it more extensively. Um, and so, but thank God they did refer him on, you know, bless them. Um, and so, yeah, we came back from, we haven't had a holiday in five years and we went away on a holiday and we came back on the Sunday and on the Monday he had to go to the hospital for the biopsies. And then a week later, he trotted up there on his own because the other biopsy was clear. Um, and they said, oh, it's nothing sinister. You know, it's just we don't know what it is. And uh, so he trotted up to guys on his own and uh, rung me and said, I've got cancer. And I was in the middle of a video conference call with work. And uh, but ironically, when I got diagnosed, I trotted off to Basildon. I was thinking that, yeah. On my own because I thought it was just a cyst. And I'm sat there thinking, all oh, these poor people, you know, they're all coming out all upset and they've all got somebody with them. Maybe I should have brought Lee. Didn't, didn't even occur to me. And then when they went, oh, and you've got cancer, I then had to go and sit in the car park and ring him at work. And oh. I said to him, and he said, right, I'm coming home. I said, well, don't worry to come home. He was like, do you honestly think I can sit in work? I need to come home. And I was like, Oh yeah, okay. okay. <laughs> and and the thing was, because I'd got the afternoon off, I thought I'll go and do a bit of shopping afterwards. Yeah. And yeah. I came out of the hospital, and I thought, well, I'm not not going shopping. It's not going to change my life. So I went shopping. <laughs> <laughs> and I'm like trotting around, thinking it's not going to change my life. I'm not going to let it take over me. Yeah. Um, and then my niece was coming around to do my hair, and I suddenly the penny kind of dropped, and I thought. I'm going to have to start sort of telling people and I yeah. sort of said to her, you know, um, oh, I've got something to tell you. And, uh, because I knew I couldn't keep it in, you know what I'm like, yeah. um, you know, I wear my heart on my sleeve. And so, yeah, that, that was when it kind of hit and I had a good old cry and, um, and so did she and, mm. you know, um, but yeah, so now, um, We've spent since November the 1st. He went in hospital on the November the 17th. Uh, mm. Had a horrendous time. He was supposed to be in for two weeks, ended up being in, in for four. Um, mm. I got told that he was going to die if I didn't get him out of there because they were neglecting him. I was staying there from seven in the morning till 10 at night because they were neglecting him. He got sepsis. He hemorrhaged. Um, oh, just oh, un literally yeah. you, you know you really couldn't write how awful it was mm. um this was all private treatment which was the biggest mistake i ever made mm. um and the the you know the the person the senior person that spoke to me said get him back into the nhs fast um which god bless the nhs yeah. they allowed me to bring him back into the nhs and he's now doing He's had radiotherapy. He had six weeks of radiotherapy. Um, mm. It's been hell for him. Yeah. Um, and for me, obviously. Yeah. Um, but he's doing, he's doing really well now. He's starting to get himself back. And he's still on huge, he's on morphine and fentanyl and paracetamol and you name it. Um, but he's out of a wheelchair. He's, he's only using a crutch. Um, to go up and down stairs now so he's it's really incredible well um yeah he's doing fantastically well under the care of the nhs yeah and, well, and thank thank god he was in hospital before the virus i was just gonna say that yeah and he managed to complete his radiotherapy before now they've cancelled yeah. all radiotherapy all chemotherapy Surrendous. he would have and they said to him, we're going to let you finish because he was like four or five days off of finishing mm. before they closed it all down. Um, and so, yeah, he's been tremendously lucky, mm. that, you know, that all of the timing has been, you know. And also... And now we're in lockdown. So... Exactly. Now, it's, it's like... He's it, now got 21, uh, 12 weeks to, to heal. To heal. Yeah, absolutely. And, and it's as much as... Um, it, you know coronavirus and everything that's going on is horrendous and there are you know obviously 
terrible devastation de devastations in people's relationships and things but you two together you like you you lock down with your best buddy and you can look after him and he can as you were telling me earlier on he's getting about he's pottering around and it almost feels like well the rest of the world can go to buggery because i've got everything i need here um, and you've got your four dogs that you know that love you and you love them and you've got that kind of little space as much as you are uh, this is what's interesting i found is that you are very much like me is normally under normal circumstances it's like i want to go here i want to do this what should i do let's zush, let's get in the car let's have an adventure and and now it's like you your whole uh, mindset has changed around this lot amazing yeah scenario, i mean literally i when he finished his radiotherapy i literally felt like i was pulling up the drawbridge yeah. and and that was it and i'm like you know unless we have to go out which he still has to go back for um uh checkups once a week and mm. and we go via the chemist and we sit outside and they bring out his, his medication they're brilliant absolutely lovely mm. and um but apart from that that's it and i'm class as vulnerable as well so you know the, it when we're clearly we're the vulnerables we are the new superheroes <laughs> you know um the invincibles or the vulnerables yeah 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 the vulnerables <laughs> so um you know but he, he, he's a safe space being in here you know we're not going to catch it, anything either of us mm -hmm. um the scariest was when it was really taking a hold and we were backwards and forwards to the hospital every day mm -hmm. um that was when it was really scary because i thought you know we're so vulnerable to catching something yeah now it yeah. actually feels like a, a little cocoon you know mm. and i'm not the only one i've got a couple yeah. of friends that are you know in in dire situations mm. where where loved ones are on borrowed time i mean lee's not on borrowed time thank god mm -hmm. um but he needs to heal but i've got at least two friends that their loved ones are on borrowed time and they're saying well actually you know what this is an investment in my memories yeah. and I've got 12 weeks to do nothing but be with this person yeah. and, and I'm going to remember this time and I'm going to make the best out of it I can possibly. And they're just having a really lovely quality time. Yeah. you know and i just, just think everyone should have that attitude because it is it is borrowed time it is like you're putting a pin in your life and you're not dashing off doing everything being busy 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 it's like well look at the people that you're living with you've chosen to live with these people if they're annoying you <laughs> either you choose your attitude or, or review how your life is going but if if they're your family and you love them or you're living with friends or you're living with flatmates or whatever really cherish this time because it's going to change everything and if you're getting on well now you're going to be with them for forever and for life um but also i mean i'm i'm you know for the last since november i've not been able to breathe with for myself you know yeah. i've not been able to you know people kept putting on facebook you know make sure you look after yourself and i'm like you know what looking <coughs> after me at the moment is sleeping and eating and that's it you yeah. know there was no time for me at all now there is and so yeah. now i'm investing in me i'm doing training courses i've signed up for a, a sewing course like an online sewing course um and and i'm just taking a bit of time out mm. i'm getting my my linkedin thanks to you jill um <laughs> all up sparkly clean and yeah. you know ready for when i go back to work you know yeah. at the moment um you know i just see this as as time for me to gird my loins as they say or recharge <laughs> yeah. my batteries and take a bit of downtime you know considering the months and months that i've just been running on fresh on. air you yeah. know yeah so. full on talking about work i mean it's it's a totally different environment to the one that i know you in so although i know you within our community and i know you as the person that can build websites in a blink of an eye and do amazing things i also know you uh, through your other talent um thought field therapy that you've done an awful lot of research and uh, consultation in and the effects that that can have on people um and we, that might be a whole other podcast we, we're going to have to do but we'll put that to one side for now what i want to talk about is how when i see you um in your workspace as in a contract worker as a program manager to go and i think your last contract was with the bbc to be able to go in and train their people and support them as they 
get new technology involved. I see a, uh, not a totally different woman, but I, I see this um, person that, who wears a heart on her sleeve. You are not soft in any way, shape or form in that environment, are you? You are such a, a ball breaker. You know, it's like, he hasn't done it. He should have done it. Why haven't you done it? And also what you do within uh, as Project Manage Us as a community in the, the quest. So you support us and you help us to get our online publication. It's only for a year, but actually it takes a lot of effort to get those articles and the images and make it all look gorgeous and pretty. And that's something that you do, but you're still on us. This is the deadline. When are we doing it? Da, da, da. So in a collaboration, I would, note, I would um, say that as a profile is the driver. And if you haven't got a driver in your collaboration, then you ain't going nowhere because you need somebody that's constantly aware of what's going on. But just doing this behind people, why haven't you done it? And when are you going to do it? Let me know when you're going to have it. Is it going to be today? Is it going to be tomorrow? And I see that the way you work in, with your teams, um, you, you treat them with love and compassion, but you don't take any nonsense mm-hmm. and you you deliver on time, if not earlier than on time, and you and you make it happen. And it's I get the impression, you know, correct me if I'm wrong, that um, you take no prisoners, and that um, not completing on time and not completing just isn't part of your no, an option. <laughs> yeah, exactly, exactly. And I think when people come into your your sort of circumference of your being and they know that you're in charge, it just it, they absorb your energy of like, come on. Do it yesterday, yeah. um, kind of thing. Yeah, I mean the thing. The thing is, there, there are circumstances where you can't d- deliver on time, but it's it should never be a surprise, mm. you know. And so, to my mind, you know, you either deliver or you alert a risk that there's a, a chance that it won't be delivered and why. And then you look at sort of mitigations as to why, you know, what you can do to avert the problem or to deliver as much of it as you possibly can. Um, and yeah, I mean, I've been in sort of investment banking space and then at the BBC and, you know, high, high profile, um, difficult and often troubled projects um, <laughs> are the ones that I really enjoy because then you can really get your teeth into it and it's not like a sausage factory. Yeah. You really are, you know, sort of in, in, in the weeds trying to get things sorted and make things happen, you know. Um, and the only way you do that is by collaboration. You know, I don't care who you are or what level you're at, you've got to collaborate. And, you know, I, you know I've had teams of me I've had teams of 40 50 people I've had teams you know worldwide you know I've had to go to China um uh Hong Kong India Malaysia you know but the point is is that you're still it's you and me we're human beings together yeah yeah? and and the best way to get the best out of people is to be human and mm. I can't, I can't be false. I, you know, anyone who knows me that's ever worked with me will know my laugh <laughs> to start yeah. off with because generally you can hear it from wherever <laughs> I am in the building to perhaps the next door building or further. <laughs> um, but they will also know that I, I am very serious about delivery. I'm mm. very serious about, you know, responsibility and accountability but I want to have fun and I want to be caring and 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 build relationships with people you know but and and I do deliver you know if I'm given a task I will deliver it and I'm often the one that whistleblows not in a you know backstabbing kind of way no but I will go this is not going to happen and these are the reasons why and unless you do this or you look at that or you find a way of moving that this is not going to happen and i've been very unpopular for doing that mm. and and, would... and mm. I, you know and and i've always been right because <laughs> but, and that's not just saying oh yeah i'm always right no i'm right because i i'm honest and i will tell people even though it's a failure it's kind of saying look this failure is coming down the the train track unless we do something yeah and if they if their powers that be choose to ignore that and go oh no she's just overreacting don't worry about it and then within a week or so they'll go 
no, she wasn't, was she? Uh-huh. You know, and then they lost really, the week. Yeah. You know, and they're like, yeah, we really do need to do something about it. And then all of a sudden they realise that actually, you know, if I say something, I'm saying it for the, the greater good, not to pick holes or yeah. to try and, you know, drop anybody in it because that's just not my way. It's to make the, 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 the desired goal happen yeah. as close to, you know, perfect and on time as possible. You never get anything perfect on time, but, mm. you know, you, you want to achieve the best possible outcome. And unless you're open and honest and you're prepared to, you know, take your whatever in your hand and go, right, I've got to say something when everyone else is keeping quiet, I'm going to speak up then, you know, and I'm, I, I'm, proud to say that I'm respected for that you know yes I would you know I am gobby if you like but not in a in a just rattling on kind of saying nothing for the sake of it way I will say what needs to be said no matter how senior you are I will come and tell you you've got a problem yeah you know and the thing is, you're doing it for the greater good. There's a whole yes. team of people there and probably 90% of them know it's not working. Yes. Um, and they're too scared to say anything for the 10% that go, oh, everything's fine, everything's fine. But if, yeah. if one person is brave enough to be, as you say, honest and open about it, that, that's the whole, they're, they're all, they must all be so grateful for you saying it unless they're the one person that's causing the issue. <laughs> well, yeah, this is it. And I check my facts. I don't, you know, I don't... Um, you know, I don't scare the horses just for the hell of it. Mm. You know, I will always check my facts. I will also try and come up with solutions or potential solutions. And, you know, there's no point just going, oh, it's all rubbish. You know, you've got to go, if we did this and these are possibilities, and then, you mm. know, you, you spark, it may not be my solution, but yeah. my suggestion might some, be somebody else going, oh, no, that won't quite work. But if we did this, exactly, and there you've got your collaboration. Yeah. You know, the, the whole, you know, one head is, you know, many heads are better than one type thing. Yeah. It's like, or I might go and go, you know, I've got no idea how we can fix this. The only yeah. thing I can think of is this. What do you think? Yes. And all of a sudden we collectively come up with a solution. That's, that's a different emphasis. There are an awful lot of teams that come together and assume that they're collaborating. But when it's one person that's kind of overseeing everything and it's my way or the highway, it s- shuts everybody else down. And if they if a culture is created of solution focused and find a way, then nobody's going to be scared to put their head above the parapet and say, well, uh, what about, do you think maybe? And there was, I remember a guy coming to um, an 18 year old came to a collaboration global meeting once. And he said, uh, I wish school was like this. He's um, like this. Cause it's, it's really great. I said, why is that? Why is that Elliot? And he said, well, when, I, when you're at school and you put your hand up, you're always worried that, either you're going to be wrong or someone's going to shout you down or people are going to laugh at you. He said, but here I felt I could put my hand up and say something and people would actually listen. Mm. And, and that's a whole different way of being for people. And if you're used to being in that environment where you want to say something and then you say it and everyone goes, really? Oh, for goodness sake, you don't think that, do you? That's ridiculous. And I've had people say that to me and you go, Ooh, you feel like that, that small. But ne- and, but now, um, as an uh, enlightened leader, um, as Jean would say, if somebody said that to me, I would say, what is your problem? Because if they have to talk to me like that, then they are shielding something and they're the ones that are defending themselves by pointing a finger at you going, how ridiculous are you? So that isn't helping anybody having that attitude. So in a collaborative team, you'd have to kind of pick that person up and go, well, you go and do something else, anything else on your own over there in the corner. The thing, I think the thing you said there is important, though, Jill, is the listening is that I can, as you well know, talk for England. <laughs> you um, both. <laughs> and one of, and I mentioned earlier on that I'm, I was a Samaritan. Mm. And one of the biggest challenges that you have to learn is to listen. Mm. Because you're not there to do the talking. You're there to do the listening. You know, the Samaritan conversation is completely different to a normal conversation. Absolutely. You know? Yeah. A, you know what I'm like, I'm a solver, I'm a problem solver. You never, ever tell people what to do. You never solve their problems for them. They solve them themselves. And you Mm. do, you know, you do 10% of the talking and they do 90%. And so having learned that as a skill and Mm. as a, a kind of persona, I can switch into that. And the other thing is confidentiality. Mm. You know, if somebody, 
with my you know my my therapist head on mm. um if somebody comes to me and i treat them for whatever i don't then go oh do you know i saw so and so for such and such da, 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 da. um yeah. you know and i'll often see the daughter or the son of or the husband of or whatever what I don't do is go back to the person that, that brought them to me and go, oh, yeah, what their problem was, was blah, blah, blah. You know, yeah. um, if, for example, you know, somebody came to me and said, oh, yeah, I know you discussed such and such with so and so. And they came back and they told you all about this. That's fine. No, but if they've gone home and told their loved one all mm. what was said and all what will happen. That's their that's choice. Their choice. That's mm. not for me to disclose you know mm. and in a in a work setting if somebody i mean i've got a group of friends i know stuff about every single one of those friends that none of the others know yeah. right they will come to me and go don't tell the others but uh. <laughs> and you know i would never do that no you know i would never say well, I'll just tell so and so because they won't say anything. Because it's horrible. you know, I learned mm. that very early in my life that you know yeah. you regret that the minute those words are out of your mouth, that It'll confidence come back to bite you. Mm. It, it's you know you can't do it. And I think you know in a work setting, if somebody comes to me, I had a, one lad um, was having a tough time, like mental health stuff, um, and um, you know even one of the girls that worked for me came to me and said. Um, she was she was really being she kept being sick and she was really ill and all this mm. and I called her to one side and I said what on earth is going on I said I'm pregnant yeah. I don't want anyone else to know yeah? yeah and uh so all the other all the rest of the team are like is she okay and I'm like she's just got some personal issues <laughs> <laughs> and I'm like and they're like oh they all then thought there was something horrendous oh. going on. Was joyous you know? yeah lovely but even then that was her news to share exactly, exactly it wasn't my news to share I have it the other way around where different people will, will tell Alan stuff you know in confidence and then they talk to me as though I know what it's about. And I'm like, I don't know what you're talking about. Oh, but I told Alan. He, said, he hasn't told me. Did you tell him in confidence? Yeah. Obviously, he's not then told he's me. he's not going to tell me. Yeah, exactly. You know? but, but you're married. I don't care. He, if you tell him, it's still... his grave. It doesn't matter. Exactly. It's like, you know, the Samaritans. I never would come home and tell Lee chapter no. and verse. You know, and he didn't ever expect me to. No. You know, um, because it's a, a contract between you and the person at the other end of the phone. Yeah. you know you're not going to tell their story and that you know so you know and that's that's why i i honor you with um some of the stuff that you've told um our community um and you say that you don't want it um publicized in the general public and and it's i totally get that there would never be any time when i would push you to say oh go on it would be really good if blah 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 because although um it, it's something it's your story and it's your story to tell or not to tell uh, and it's absolutely perfect. And I think a lot of people feel sometimes that um, they have to wear their heart on their sleeve and tell everything. And sometimes you don't need to. It's just no, tell no, the lessons you've learned in your life. And I think the lesson, one of the lessons that you learned that you've told us so eloquently is about being loved. Um, and, and when people go through life feeling they're not loved, then there is a very hard space and a cold lonely space for them to be mm. and for you to have discovered that and almost pinpointed the moment when the penny dropped mm. is like a, hopefully you telling that story somebody else is going to sit there and go oh yeah that, yeah. that happened I mean, to me so the the the, 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 the that, that moment was my cancer mm. when um you know my brothers my sister just about everybody just dropped everything and you know put their arms around me and just gave me this safe loving space and I then that was when the penny dropped for me the one thing and when when I got the cancer I said I, you know this is because I need to learn something and I don't know what it is yet but I know I'll tell you once I'm done and then once I would got over the cancer I had a party to celebrate and uh, thank everybody and, and what have you and and you know and I said the, the whole thing that I learned was that I was loved mm. and then when Lee got cancer I you know he he was obviously in a very dark place we both were mm. and I said to him well you know maybe it's your time to realize how loved you are mm. you know mm. because he's not 
got that much self-worth he's a fairly you know anyone that knows lee he's like you know and he comes across as well you know him but he comes mm. across as like he's all sarcastic and joking and you know kind of sharp and rah, 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 rah. but actually he's as soft as anything mm. and and has no value of, he, of himself at all mm. in that he just he underestimates how special and amazing he is yeah. um and and this whole thing about being loved maybe that was the reason for him too i don't know i think everything happens in in life for a reason um i you know uh, there have been times in this last few months where I've sat there and gone, what have I done so awful to deserve all of this? Yeah, no but it's, it, and I, I just think I've got more lessons to learn. <laughs> you know, it's like with dogs, um, you know, they say that dogs don't live as long as humans because they learn their lessons quicker and they've got less to learn because they're full of love and they give love and they, they get love. Um, so they don't have to stay around for so long. Yeah. Um, maybe that's maybe that's the reason. Maybe you know, I had more lessons to learn than other people. I don't know, but I, I think um, probably your gift of giving and the way you help people, because not only um, is the Samaritans that you did for such a long time, but you also, out of lockdown season, uh, you you help um, young people, don't you? And you help rescue uh, dog centres, and you. I mean, there's a million different things that, that you do. Um... Yeah, I work with kids in foster care. Um, unfortunately, they can't see anybody at the moment. Um, oh, but I'm, a, yeah. I'm what's called an independent visitor. And um, you, you are matched up with a young person that's in foster care and you act as a buddy to them. And you take them out once a month and spend the day with them. And, um, and you're just there for them as consistency. When they get moved from place to place to place, you're the consistency. Mm. Um, and, you know, obviously with Lee being in hospital for a month and then me, you know, I, I couldn't do that. I mean, I've been doing it for like five years um, and I've had to sort of give that a sort of hiatus. But having said that, as soon as the corona kicked off, they're not allowed to be taken out or mixed with anybody anyway. So they're in lockdown as well. I mean, yeah. I've got two two youngsters that I I um I work with. But um, so yeah. I think maybe the the lessons that you've got to be you, you're waiting to be. I don't think it's necessarily a lesson. It's just you, you're doing such a great job. Do more of it. it. It's spreading your love that you've acknowledged that. Oh, okay. So if I'm loved, now I can give more to other people, and that's what you're doing. You're literally paying it back as you live with these people that you help and look after yeah, maybe i think the only the only thing is i, w I wouldn't accept it back and now i will you mm. know um and I, even during this period i've sort of kind of put it out there and gone could anyone help me with this you know i mean now we're in lockdown we can't leave the house so yeah. you know i'm having to say to people could somebody get me this or could somebody i mean i had to ask my next door neighbor to go round to my mother-in-law's who has yeah. been very well um because we've got like um cameras on her front door and back door ring doorbells and the batteries were out oh. and i said do you think bob could go around and change the batteries for me and they went yeah no problem like you know so they trotted yeah. around to my mother-in-law's and changed the two batteries which five minute job but it's we're not we're not allowed to do that we, we i know full well the minute i got there she would come out oh yeah you that know? wouldn't work she'd and, want to give you a hug and everything wouldn't she yeah she she's vulnerable we're vulnerable it, we, you know so yeah mm. it's not it's not uh it's not the thing to do but but asking i've i've now been forced into asking for help yeah. um and you know i've got people tripping over themselves to help and they you know, want to, and you've, you've yeah. got to give them that opportunity because as much as you love giving, exactly. as we were saying exactly. earlier, they want you to. You know, I've got a, a woman who's volunteered to go and get a Thai meal for me. Oh. You know, I'd, I've got a volunteer that gets his mum shopping for me. You know, people want to volunteer and the, the volunteer army out there is amazing. People yeah. are sewing scrubs for NHS wards and sewing bands and crocheting bands for the, for nice. the masks. So they, you know, you've got people making plastic visors. You've got unbelievable things happening. People, mm. you know, picking up stuff and delivering it to walls, hot meals. And it's just phenomenal. It, it, it has brought out the most amazing things in people. I think that, so. Yeah. You know, and, and I think the whole world is ripe for collaboration global. You know, I think now to to you know the world the, the roundabout has stopped 
yeah. and we're all now reevaluating what's important in life yeah absolutely and collaboration is the only thing that's getting us through yeah you know and, and as you say it's phenomenal the these lengths people are going to to help i, I just watched a, a program on tv and everyone was thanking the nhs and the eight o'clock clap that goes on and all of those amazing things because you know the delivery guys the people on the transport um you know as you say the restaurants that are converted their businesses into you know uh, getting food out there to the nhs the organizations that are you know and if you work for the nhs show us your badge and you get this for free or that for free or we'll give you or you go up the front in the queue yeah and, and people that are paying for their food and all sorts yeah. of things it's just yeah. and I, I hope that doesn't wear off i hope people don't get I cynical hope. about it but it, it is so. i think you know i think we we are we're very we we have very short memories yeah. but i think this has been such a it's not just been a a, a week it's been it's going to be a long time it's going to take us a long while to recover from this mm. and it's been global this mm. is not just one country so there's no one upmanship it's it's a yeah. level it's a complete leveler humanity um, has to join together it's exactly. not about uh, this country against that country or this nationality against that nationality or you know the blacks against the whites or, or whatever it's not people against people it, we're all in it together yeah. and as you said I, mean, I, I shared a, a, there was a video of of all nhs people from different different creeds cultures races colors mm. of skin and so on um and it you know this is the thing is there's so many people that bec have been through brexit have become very very closed and oh yeah well you know we don't want these people and we don't want that people and you know i mean which always always triggers me and yeah it me always you know it's not it's not something that i will accept um but it's like hold on a minute the, just remember this the people that were there fighting for you in the NHS hospitals may not have the same colour skin as you, but you know what? It doesn't matter. This is Great Britain, Great Britain, and we are great yeah. together. Not apart, together, yeah. you know? I mean, you do a DNA work. test on any one of us. No, no, uh, there is no such thing as a person no. of Britain. We're from all over the universe, <laughs> any other, the, the world anyway. Uh, bonkers. Well, on that note, I am going to say thank you so much. We have certainly looked into what it's like to be human and you my love have got many hidden depths that um on the one hand you wear your heart on your sleeve uh, and you share that with everybody but um for people to know your backstory and to understand the strength that you have because of what you've been through and what you're currently going through um i just wish you every success as you get through lockdown every success for lee as he gets better um and hopefully if somebody's watching this um and they want a bloody good program manager in the, in the tech field then that you're the person to go for because they know they're going to get a, an honest laughter filled office uh, and get their project done so yeah, thank you exactly. so much there's no there's no better team than a happy team you get yeah. much more out of people and you get much more done and and it's fun and you enjoy it you know but um I can't do it any other way, unfortunately. <laughs> that's, that's the way I am. There's, so. there's no two sides, exactly. You no, see exactly. what you see. I am yeah. wig. What you see is what you get. Absolutely. But thank <laughs> you, Jill. I mean, you've you've helped me enormously, and you know, um, it, it, knowing that collaboration global is there has been a real um, comfort Brilliant. as well, because it's a it's not just a person is a movement and it's a, a a community that is so supportive and so um open and honest and cheering for you you know yeah. um that it just is it, it's is how we all should be and hopefully you know we all will be and, and we all you know the whole even in the name collaboration global you were looking you know you were here you know ages in front of the coronavirus that uh, needs collaboration globally <laughs> it's yeah. like kind of you, you had an insight it's long before indeed you know. listen if anybody wants to contact you either to have a chat and have a giggle or to offer any support and advice or to actually hire you when this lockdown is finished what's the easiest way for them to get hold of you um I use I've got loads of emails because I've got loads of strings to my bow, but um just kwestrap at gmail dot com or one word K A Y not just the letter K. Um so yeah, kwestrap at gmail dot com and uh if you're struggling emotionally, mentally, I can help with that. And if you need 
to hire me, which of course you do. Yes. Um, you know, <laughs> once, once we're uh, out of lockdown, then uh, yeah, that would be fantastic. So. I'd be lucky to have you. So thank you again, Kay. It's been a pleasure talking thank to you. you. And um, love every time we get together. It's, it's just a joy to have you on my dream team. So thank you again for all of that. Thank Cheers. you for having me. See you next time. Cheers. Bye-bye.